Hello, chill computer guy. We are here in Bitwig Studio. We are taking a look at, I know I do a lot of templates. I'm a template guy. I just like to uh, get in the perfect headspace to create music and a lot of the setup. I like a very, very clean slate is what I'm getting at. And, uh, and the thing is, is a lot of times that clean slate is either too clean or too cluttered. And so it's a, it's a very delicate balance between the two as far as having a workspace that feels launched but not restricted if that makes sense so the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, this as you can see the inspectors on the right now the only way you can do this is in preferences and I'm going to show you how in a second but you have the inspector and the browser basically on the same plane um, and then of course your other stuff you know that is on that same plane as well because you have your browser here and as long as your browser is open it will stay open and now if I click on a track it's not going to go back to the inspector and now it'd be great in preferences if this would go back to the inspector um, in other words I click on a track I want to see the inspect I want to have to click to get to the browser but I don't want to have to click to get out of the browser so if I'm looking at samples there I am I've clicked there's my browser but as soon as I click a track I want it to switch back to the inspector so maybe a default preference bitwig that'd be really great to do this you got to go up into options preference you're gonna go to display normally the default I believe is large single display large now as you can see here we have a drop-down menu and single display large I believe is the default depending on your monitor size I have a 1440 monitor so this is automatically I believe if it's 1080 or higher it automatically defaults to single display large I'm gonna go ahead and click small so this is actually a display designed for a smaller monitor but all that it really does is it combines, it puts the inspector in the same plane as the uh, browser and all this other stuff. Um, and so that's, that's a really, I, I prefer that. Having it default back to the inspector with every track would be a huge, huge plus for me. Just because I find myself going to the inspector constantly, but I don't find myself going to the browser constantly. So that's a huge thing. Um, but what you can see here is I have, a, I have my stuff set up in the arranger. I don't like the fat arranger. I just don't like it. Um, it bugs me. I don't know why it bugs me. If you could size these channels up and down and control that, um, I would actually prefer this probably. But I just prefer everything collapse like this looks nicer um, so what you can see is we have things collapsed down now that's the arrange now if we go over to the mix panel you can see that I have all seven scales and then you can put whatever scales in here these are just the seven that, that I kind of know of and know and so what you can do is you can drag these over if you hit control you'll copy it you can drag this over to here if you double click it what you'll see here is what I've done is I've done uh, six octaves of the uh, of the minor scale here which is A to A and uh, so whatever key your song is you can just hit control a and then slide this down to whatever key you want your song to be in and then once you fold this down uh, you can do no wrong in other words you will be within the scale of your song and then another great thing about this is if you skip every other note you automatically have a chord right here so this is a triad and then you have a seventh chord here and then this is a ninth chord and so you can really easily work out your chords just by dragging over whatever scale, hitting Control A and putting it into whatever key you want, and then uh, going from there. So that's a really useful uh, thing. And so I have all the scales over here. Clips into the master channel. If you double click it, you'll go right into the automation, which is something I just discovered is very unique because if you double click into here, you, you just get your notes. Even if you double click, if you double click, it centers it. But if you double click, in the uh, master if you double click that again you go right into the automation which I guess makes sense why are there uh, clip slots in the master channel well just for that think of them as automation slots temporary hold for all my scales that way I don't have to go in and write them all out I can just want to be a mixlidian I can just go ahead and control C and you know drag one of them over find my key and then copy control copy that across all my instruments and then I have my scale and all my keys and then of course you know my uh, my pads would be a couple octaves up my bass would be a couple octaves down and then just kind of go from there now you'll see what we have um, is we have kind of a, a eight track or nine track or whatever you got here um, but we start out with the kick kick is one of my favorite plugins it's by Sonic Academy it's called kick 2 
I think this plugin's like uh, 50, 60 bucks. It's worth every dime. This will basically make any kick drum sound imaginable. And not only that, but you can do uh, a lot of sound design in here as far as low end, high end. You can make a snare drum, a hi hat. I mean, what you have here is you have a bass, uh, you have a main uh, wave here, and then you also have some click, three clicks. You have uh, just, just this is a really, really powerful plugin. It's on the top 10 plugins you must have. Kick two by Sonic Academy. And so right now I just have that in for a 4-4. And so there's my 4-4. So I can just open my track and instantly you hit my 4-4. Say I'm gonna work on a dance track, whatever. You know, this is the 4-4, but that's the kick two. And then you'll see here I have a track called Eight Kicks. And what this is is basically a drum machine. And then I have eight different kicks. Bunch of different genres. And it's just eight of them. That way, instead of digging around in the browser, messing with it, I can just, these are eight kicks that I just quickly put in here that I find very useful from different genres. Um, and then you'll see right next door is the snare drums. Same thing, it's just eight snare drums that just quickly I put in there. And of course you can go six, you can put, uh, you know, tons and tons of drums. I think these, these machines fit like, what is that, 1632, 64, I don't know, a shitload of drums. So you can put all your favorite snares and kicks in here, and then it's all in one little thing. The only thing about putting thousands of drums in here is once you open this up, you're going to end up with thousands of tracks, so that gets a little annoying. But it, it's a good starting point, that way you're not digging around in your browser. There's nothing I dislike more than getting in, you know, starting a project and just digging around in your browser and not being able to find the sound you want right away. So we have eight hi-hats and eight open, so it's basically bunch of hi-hats and then some open hi-hats and just just like I say just enough to get you started we have the electric 88 this is uh, by waves this is a really really great this is a very very inspirational uh, uh, little uh, kind of Rhodes type electric 88 uh, solid state organ type thing and The great thing I like about this is it's super inspirational. It just has a sound to it that just makes you want to work on chords, work on melodies. And so this is usually kind of where I go first to work out my melodies and chords. You know, there's a little melody, some chord progression. You know, and so really a good first stop for working out melodies and chords in your head. Um, this is probably the first track I go to when I open a project. Um, and then next to that, we have the Element, which is another uh, synthesizer by Waves. And this synthesizer is really underrated. Um, it, the filter is incredible on this, and the EQ. Uh, waves, they're known for, you know, effects. They're not really known for, for instruments or synthesizers, but... But this is, this is really a great, great bass synth. I use this mainly for basses. I mean, listen to this filter. And so this is kind of my first stop for basses. This is the one synth I go to when I want to work on basses. Um, and the great thing about this synthesizer is it's just, it's a sound designer's dream. It's really, really, um, you can just jump in here and sound design. I very rarely use presets with this synth because it's so easy to get in here and sound design. You know, it's two oscillators, you have pulse width, you have FM, you have a really great sounding filter. You have some effects over here. The EQ, it has a high and low cut. I mean, you can sculpt your whole sound just using this EQ. Um, it has a little step sequencer, which I don't really use as much, but but this is a great synth to just initialize, jump in here, and create a sound. And I usually uh, create bass sounds because, because of the filter. It has a very, very analog, old-school feel. You have two different UIs for it also, so that's kind of neat. Um, and so that's, that's Element. Now next to that is another Waves uh, synthesizer. This is uh, 
this is a codex here. The thing is with Waves plugins is they're kind of expensive, but if you hit the sales, you get a rotation. I think I got Codex and Element for like under a hundred bucks for both of them. Now Codex is is pretty amazing. This is a Wavetable synth. The problem with Codex is it was overshadowed by uh, Serum. Serum has a very similar look. Uh, you know, I recommend initializing the patch, jumping in here, and sound designing. Um, to me, a main, the main thing about a synthesizer is something I can jump into in sound design. In other words, I want the bells and whistles there, but mainly the bells and whistles that I need, you know. And so this is really great. You have two oscillators and uh, initialize this. Is you can loop these, and now you can actually visually see it's going back and forth between those two. And then your midpoint... And again, it's just a really great filter. Again, another great synthesizer for sound designing. So I had the codex on board as well by Waves. Next up is one of my favorites, the Synthmaster. Um, the Synthmaster, as you know, is probably, you know, as far as the price goes, is my favorite synth, price-wise. My favorite synth might be Serum, but Serum's 200. The, the Synthmaster, you can find this on, on sale for like 60 bucks. And the thing about the Synthmaster, it will make any sound imaginable it will make it's just incredible and the browser on it if you're if you're into presets the browser has genres and so something about a lot of browsers with these synthesizers not that i really i i, I like the sound design i don't really like presets but when you want a quick sound um having the musical style in the browser is super handy um but yeah the synth master was recently updated so now that you can just drag and drop this uh, LFO and then have control over the uh, the amount over here. So you can see, there you go there. And so, uh, oh boy. So that's that's kind of a new thing. So Synthmaster, uh, you just have to check out Synthmaster. Um, it's price, as far as price goes, it's the best synth out there, hands down just because you can get this thing on sale for like 60 bucks and it will basically do anything imaginable. It has an incredible arpeggiator on it too. So that's Synthmaster. Serum, of course. Um, you got to have Serum in there. Now, the great thing about Serum is it's probably the most well-known and most popular synthesizer on the market. And it is, you know, it's really quite a masterpiece. The layout, I mean, it's just an unbelievable synthesizer. You can see here it says Plan Active. What I'm doing is uh, if you check out Splice, splice.com, um, what you can do is with Splice, you can actually set up on your account uh, for them to deduct $10 a month for 19 months, and then you own Serum. There's no interest, there's no nothing. It's straight up. And I don't know about you, but I had Netflix for two years and didn't even realize it. And I could have had Serum, you know. So, you know, I understand the 189 or 200 bucks for for a synth. I mean, I don't know about you, but I just uh, I can't just fork out 200 dollars for a synthesizer. You know, I have a pretty strict threshold. You know, so with this, you can just have it deduct 10 bucks a month for, you know, a little over a year and a half, and Serum is yours. So you got to have Serum. Serum is just, basically what I love about Serum so much is the fact that it's just, the user interface is just so beautiful and so easy to work with. And it's just, again, for sound, it's a sound designer's dream. You can come in here and you can really work out a sound uh, real easy. 
And then last up, we have Hive. Hive, I actually bought this synthesizer because they were having that uh, special with uh, with Bitwig Studio where you could get uh, like 50% off on, on Hive if you were a Bitwig Studio owner. And I, you know, I, I went ahead and bit that deal and, and got and got Hive. And, and Hive's great. You know, Hive's a great synth. It's a great subtra basic subtractive synth. It doesn't really have the pulse width. I guess you can modulate the pulse width, but... Um, it's very, very, very similar to the most well-known synth there is, and that's Silent. But the thing is with Silent, is Silent, in my opinion, does have a bit more of an analog sound to it. Um, but that being said, Hive is a really incredible synth. Um, very sim similar in structure to, to Silent. You have your... <clears throat> your two oscillators, two sub oscillators, your filters. I think I did a review on this, but uh, you have uh, the three sound engines. Is really they're really great. Normal, dirty, and clean. Um, you know, so a great synthesizer. Like I say, I own it, so I put it in the track. And so you can see between all these tracks, I can quickly get, come in here. You know, pull up some of my favorite synths and and like go in there and start putting putting together MIDI data, start working out a track. So that's it. That's my uh, that's my opening template. One of my mini opening templates um, on the arranger. I also recommend dragging this out. You know, and uh, so you got eight eight tracks there. So you have you have eight scenes. You have your arranger. And you're, you're pretty much ready to go. Anyway, Chill Computer Guy, please subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, we'll have more quick tips, tutorials, things like that coming up. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week.